In this thread, common fluff misconceptions about 40k due to selective reading and outdated lore. Imperial Guard don't actually die in droves. I feel like this is a really common one. Everyone views Imperial Guard as a meat shield that die in the thousands in a single battle, but this really isn't reflective in the fluff, and is just a common misconception due to people confusing the Imperial Guard with PDF or Penal Legion. Only looking at major battles where literally everyone is getting fucked up, and the sheer number of Imperial Guard that exist make the death numbers seem way higher than they actually are. In truth, the actual Imperial Guard are generally highly trained and disciplined using, with very low casualties, numbers during week to week combat. Cadians, the most common depiction of Imperial Guard, actually have an incredibly low mortality rate, despite their wide usage. I don't know, like Kitty is gone now. Kitty got fucked up big time. <laughs> like Kitty got really fucked up big time. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I suppose the guy does have some points. I do feel like penal regiments uh, do get thrown in and they're just all considered the same. However, I just can't accept 40k lore without the Imperial Guard dying in like the billion yeah. on a daily basis. For me, it's just not 40k if it's not. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I know that's not... I, he does make some very good points, but it's just not the way I want it to be. <laughs> you know what I mean? At the end of stripping a planet... All Tyranids throw themselves into Jestin pools and get dissolved. The hive mind doesn't waste precious energy creating complex creatures only to dissolve them all. Only feeder organisms like rippers with incredibly basic designs and can consume tens of its own weight in biomass get thrown into the pools. With more specialised feeders like pyrovores and hyrospex consuming metals and other tough materials that rippers alone can't handle. It's possible that pyrovores and hyrospecs only just pre-chew these materials for rippers later. Other than feeder organisms, pretty much all other Tyranids return to their hive ships by climbing the same ventral shafts used to suck up biomass, then go dormant. Other Tyranids like gene stealers and lictors will attempt to stow away escaping transport. Personally, I always assumed that training and discipline varied through the guard, but on average both were fairly good. The Commissariat exists for a reason, though, but because of the grim and dark nature of the world. Even though a las gun is shooting like a 50 cal or better, and the flak armour the average guardsman has issued is better than any personal armour we have today by several degrees of magnitude, they still die in high numbers because the galaxy at large is just that hostile and inimical to human existence. Yeah, like, I've never been one that really enjoys that. Oh, yeah, that's going to see part of 50 cal today. I don't know. It's not really for me personally. However, I do believe... Now, there was a good one I read a, week, a while back that was a good few years, so forgive me if I'm a wee bit out. But I love the idea of, so the Imperial Guard have been using las guns for a very long time at this period. And if you think about it, most aliens that las guns come up against do die. The only ones that they're not really effective against is orcs, which are absolutely everywhere. Um, Eldar does actually work relatively well against, doesn't work very well against chaos. You know, it is still an effective weapon, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And I think it's more, it's it served its purpose and it's got to the point where anything that a las gun's going up against is just really outmatched mm -hmm. because the, the type of aliens that they're dealing with now, there's just nothing to compare against because whenever they were fighting aliens during like you know the Greek Crusade and all that, they were mm -hmm. a lot weaker and that's where you saw a lot more usage in it. Like partially I believe a bolter was just designed to deal with orcs. Partially the way it works, the way um bolts explode and like, you know, it turns them into Swiss cheese essentially. I believe and also it's got that. Yeah, but the factor. Or the orcs not have like the same height as like a rhino or something that Oh like, uh, thicker, so, thicker, I would yeah, say. So they would need something. They need something like that. And I believe because like a las gun, it like you know, it leaves like a penny sized hole. Like it goes right through them. Yeah. It's got no issue going through them. It's just, just you, rocking up the it, orc it, with a musket. It, it's just it's just you need to turn the you need to turn the orc into like Swiss cheese. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's kinda where I my view is on las guns. I still do really enjoy them. And you know, I'm I I do not like the whole meme oh the flashlights. You know their shit. They are useful, but I just feel like, let's be honest with you, humans are pretty low on the level of what they can deal with when yeah. it comes to the aliens of the yeah. first millennium. Does that make sense, or am I just rambling? If anything, it builds them up the way the screeching guard fags want. I read a lot of marine fiction, and there's a fair amount of marine squads dying to a man. It's not just BL stuff either. The Forge World Siege of Varax had the Dark Angels lose over 50% of the chapter after accomplishing jack shit. 
I will I will agree with him on that. But honestly, I'm sorry, guys, but there's nothing worse than Guardsman fans. <laughs> Next bayonets, guys. I'm sorry, but the memes are dead, and I've heard them for years. Can you <laughs> can you guys please come up with better Guardsman memes? Because I'm I'm sorry, I just don't like them, and I know a lot of you guys are going to take a thick, but you know you know I'm speaking the truth. So <laughs> tell me I'm not. You guys know I'm speaking the truth. Come up with better memes at this mm-hmm. point. It's been years. It's been over ten years. Both the potency of orcoid latent psychic fields and the primitiveness of their technology are greatly exaggerated. In the tabletop RPG, which does a good job of showing 40k accurately, orcish weapons are often unreliable, which is a key word that makes them jam on a roll of 91+. The orcish belief in their weaponry removes the unreliable quality from their weapons. Orcs aren't firing infinity magazines of magical bullets while shouting bang. Orcs aren't stupid. Okay. Um, <laughs> look, look, I'm sorry. It's, again, I feel like this is one of the ones for me. I personally want this to be a thing. Yeah. Because it's one of the things I... Oh, I would love orcs to have high intelligence. Yeah. But it's... Uh, they've switched out brain for brawn. Yeah. I I, like, I just I just really like 40k orcs. They're one of the few examples of orcs where That's they're right, just... That's orcs, I think, can be led very easily. Yeah. If... Like, you beg, you win. You, yeah. you, you got the bigger crumper, you're gonna... You, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's like, like, simple as... Right the stronger and all that. The boys. <laughs> the boys. Orcs aren't stupid. They are just generally uncreative. You try to convince an orc a gun has infinity ammo and he'll tell you that's dumb. Where's all the duck effect? Don't even see any sparky what's its to make up for it. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> I love your orc voice. It's great. <laughs> it's more Australian, if I'm honest with you. You what? <laughs> <laughs> even if you find an incredibly gullible orc, Unless there's literally billions of orcs that believe the same thing, that orc isn't going to magic himself up some ammo. Well, yeah, that's true. It, 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 you do need numbers. You do need numbers, and they are they are only willing to believe in certain things. I love orcs, but I really, I love orcs, and I just want this to be a thing, and I'm cool with it. You know what I mean? I I, I it's one of the few ones for me. I'm like, you know what? This is perfect. Mm-hmm. Never change. <laughs> the blood ravens aren't loyalist thousand sons or anything like that. They're just aberrant ultramarines or imperial fist successor chapter with a bad case of amnesia. The new fluff all but confirms this. Again, this fell's not long, but I don't want it to be so. Hey guys, do you like models in your tabletop role playing games? Cause we do too. Do you like having big bitty waifus on your table? Cause we do too. <laughs> <laughs> we got human bitties, we got lizard bitties, we got orc bitties, Oni Biddies, Cat Bussies, we've got everything you want at neckbeardia.co.uk. <laughs> Check the links down below, it helps us out a lot. Sorry for interrupting the video, let's get on with the story. The Mechanicum does innovate, but at an extremely slow rate. This is due to a mixture of dogma and safety. Don't want your tank to accidentally summon demons, as well as internal conflicts. So if your world makes a new variant, you are reluctant to share it with others. This is also why tech marines actually innovate far more than the Mechanicus proper. They aren't as dogmatic and driven to benefit themselves or their world. So if a tech marine realises that adding a different gun to a tank makes it better, he will make it. And nobody will do any real complaining because he is a member of the Mechanicus backed up by a space marine chapter. Very good point there actually, I've never thought about that before. Um, I think you put in a lot of words that I, oh, actually that clicks with me. You know what I mean? Because I have came across this a few times. Like, why are tech marines just so much more capable than the typical ad mech? It just mm. doesn't make sense. And then another one I think you brought up, which I think is really good, was the whole, it's it's very slow to advance any technology. And also, think about it like this. How hard is it to get shit into mass production? You mm. know, it's very difficult. And for something to catch on. Good points. I like that. Imperial vehicles are dark age of technology farming tools. Based upon, and that's actually canon going all the way back to Rogue Trader. Short version is that modern Imperials don't have the know-how to maintain actual weapons from the Dark Age of Technology, in general. So instead, they use systems that were originally built for colonists as a basis of most of their tech. It's not high performance, but it's reliable, easy to maintain, can use a wide range of fuel sources, etc. I always liked that one. That was mm-hmm. one. That's always been one of my favourite ones, because I love... Like you always think in 40k, it's like, oh, it's always going to advance, it's always going to get better technology. But then you think, it's like, well, we've always had that 
T uh, st- two step forwards, one step back. Me knowing nothing about forty k is the dark age of technology. Us? No, it's a far bit on. It's about fifteen to twenty five. All right, I'm just wondering if they're like rocking about, about them. Just wondering if they're rocking about with like combine harvesters. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, with me, twenty k, I'm more interested. To be honest with you. That the Thai are communists. This is often said by Americans who have no clue what communism is due to propaganda, which makes it ironic that America really liked the Imperium. The similarities are hilarious. Well, well they're not exactly communist, but it is a good analogy. Would mm. that make sense? <laughs> I, I, I feel like they're not exactly communist, but um, the whole concept of the greater good, I feel like if you wanted to water it down, you could argue, yeah, they're communists, but... Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? It's the same, it's same way, like, you know, yeah, the Chinese are communists today. Well, not really. They're, they've got a lot of capitalists. Look, I'm not getting into fucking politics here, yeah, guys. Next not. post, all right? <laughs> I'm not doing this, all right? I'm not fucking not doing this, boys. On a related note, that the Imperium is fascist. There are some surface similarities, but the overall structure of the Imperium is closer to a feudal system than a fascist system. As long as an Imperial planet pays tithes and keeps the faith, it can do what it wants, just like feudal vassals were expected to do. Funnily enough, the Tao have more in common with fascism than the Imperium in terms of structure. Whilst they lack the xenophobia, they are still a rigid, militaristic society who seeks expansion and forces other civilizations to accept their ideology and obey their ethereal masters. Actually, that's very but good. But so do you, the Imperium. <laughs> well, I think the guys lied to a certain extent. I, I, like this, the, no, but the. I don't, well, I, once again, know nothing about 40k, but I know the Imperium um, are xenophobic. Yeah. They're well, rigid. Well, they're, they're xenophobic for a reason. The reason why yeah, they're no, xenophobic I get that, but is because the Emperor believed that humanity cannot never be safe while aliens exist yeah, in the universe. The I get that, but they're, they're still xenophobic. xenophobic. They're rigid, they're militaristic, and their society seeks expansion and forces other civilizations to accept their ideology and obey their ethereal masters. Well, they yeah, yeah well, they both do do that. However, what I think what he's trying to get at with the whole feudal system is there's definitely more like, well, I'll say this again. Oh, actually, come to think of it, the Thai have a caste system as well. Oh, this is actually quite interesting. Now, this is this is this is opening a bit more. They're very similar. It's, it's opening more doors in my head. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Um, I do get what he's saying when it comes to like you know a more feudal system because like let's be honest with you as long as you're paying your tithe the imperium isn't going to really fuck with you that much just pay them whatever you want just pay your taxes Mm -hmm. and realistically you'll be left alone unless you're pulling some real heretical shit yeah you know what i mean and there's not really that many things where they're going to show up at your door and be like look you boys need to get that shit sorted out yeah maybe i don't know maybe the tower because there are a younger maybe they could be more um they have more in common than what they have they more in common than what they like to admit. Yeah. The only thing is the Thai accept other leases and other species mm-hmm. into them as long as they um as long as they are willing to accept their religion or their ideology. Oh. It's a very weird one. However, they do sterilize humans. Um it's weird. It yeah. gets really bizarre. But actually I really like this one. This was a very good post. There's something meta about the cycle of dark theme in forty K lore usually around the Imperium. It becomes exaggerated and memed on to the point where secondaries think a common joke or an extraordinary situation is actually commonplace in the setting, i.e. guardsmen 15 hour life expectancy. Imperium fags come well actually <laughs> with equally misguided fun and passed off as canon. Actually most of the Imperium is stable and has decent living conditions. We just hear about the grim dark parts because it's entertaining. Alternatively, any lore that actually presents how shitty things are, such as Lords of Silence on Igri Worlds, is derided as grim derp. At some point, the in-universe propaganda stopped being taken as such and started being treated as canon, which is fairly reflective of the setting itself. Yeah, I, I feel like that's really true, though. I think, personally for me, I, I think most of my 40k lore that I know is fanon, mm. if I'd be serious. Like, you know, sometimes it does come to it where... There's parts of the universe I'm like, you know what, I want that to be real, I, I choose that, 
you know, like say for instance, one one of the ones that I always buy into, and I'm like, you know, this is this is canon in my head. This is what I personally believe happens in the 40k universe. Is back in third edition, what they would do with Imperial ships would uh, they would load the massive shells by hand, like they would have like you know thousands of boys lifting up these gigantic shells and actually like physically loading them into the chamber. I like I thought that was really cool. I thought that was like hyper grim dark, and I was like ten at the time, and I thought it was like oh. Rah! Like, I thought it was really cool, guys, okay? Uh, I do feel like that is a thing with a lot of 40k, because, let's be serious, we just kind of want it to be. And uh, I feel like, you know, we just kind of give up a lot of the time when it comes to what actually is put out. It's like, like, it's been memed, it's been said that many times, and too many people actually believe it to be the case. That, is it going to be, is it the case now? If so many people believe it, is it is it the way it is now? You know? I don't know. It's a, It's an interesting thought experiment. Machine spirits are basic programs, even up to and including AI, like in the Bane Blade. Like they pretend it isn't programs or AI, or because they're so stagnant tech-wise and information flow is so controlled, even the mech doesn't understand it's AI. A tank can show you how to adjust turret firing and will tell you its oil is low. Better pray and give thanks to the machine spirit and apologise to it. Start reciting hymns as you go through the mandated dogmatic steps of singing one's verse while you pop the hood. Moment of silence, then another verse as you take the cap off, then light candles as you pour the oil in. A heretic would be someone who either just puts oil in during battle without songs, or someone's a tentacled rhino demon to bind the crew's souls into the crew cab. Whichever. I always like that one. Also, the machine spirit I always thought was a really cool aspect of 40k as well. I just love the concept of it. I love their... They do have an understanding of technology, and I do feel like it is over-exaggerated, but I still love the marvel and the wonder of it all. You know, it's, it's, it is interesting, and that meme of an ad mech fucking a toaster is an old dead meme that needs to die. <laughs> Alright, I'm serious about this. 40k memes need a fucking... Needs a fucking jump start, right, guys? <laughs> I'm, I, I'm getting to that point where it's like, look, like, 40k memes haven't advanced in ten years. Easy. We we need we need some new blood. We need to we need to like revitalize them because I, I enjoy 40k memes, but they're just old and done and dying. I've already seen it, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's just the way it is. Well, I think we're going to end it here, guys. Yeah, let us know what you think about like you know common misconceptions. Things that, like, you know, people always come off, or you've he- heard people say to you, well, actually, well, this, 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 and like, well, I don't like give a fuck. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I really don't care. This is, as I say, this is fanon or fan canon in my mind. Like, for me, the old Garzman party is fan canon. I believe, like, I, I actually, in my in my version of 40k, the old Garzman party is, existed, yeah. exists within that universe. I, I, I can tweet that just the same yeah. as any 40k book. For me personally, anyway. And I feel like, because 40k is that big, and the way that the, like, the whole game is designed so you can play tabletop game, and you can fight anyone, so you can mm-hmm. have space planes fighting space planes, you can have orcs fighting orcs, you can, you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it opens the door for anyone can do whatever the fuck they actually feel like. And that's kind of what the lore is meant for, but the lore is just so big and massive. It's taken in its whole... It, uh, there's like three different... But that's pi- a good thing about the lore, because oh, it yeah. is so big, people can make uh, yeah, so people- many stories and yeah. you know expand on it as they want. Like, the guy who writes um, and on a 40k. Yeah. Um, like, that's completely not canon. Oh yeah, but it's, but still it's fun. so fun and so and, good. And, and the thing is, because there's enough stuff to work on and build off, and everyone already knows who the characters are and what they yeah. do. You know, you can be like, oh yeah, they people would. are more yeah. intrigued in this than yeah. Yeah, I, I, like I love a bit of fan fiction from time to time, and I believe 40k is fan fiction at this point mostly mm. because it's not done by one art author; it's done by hundreds of yeah. authors over the course of what, like, coming up thirty years. Mm-hmm. When did it start? Like. 79 I think was not so or, early 80s yeah th- like sometime back then like you know and a lot of the old lore doesn't like hold up today or you know Games Work wants to change it and I'm not going to start talking about Games Workshop at this point because they just make me sad yeah. anytime I bring them up uh, but well, like I've, I've gambled long enough you yeah. guys let us know what you think down below your favourite like you know lore tidbits or stuff that you just like like stop fucking saying that would you yeah. and like you know enough with your, with your guardsmen your fucking and death corpse of Kriegs and your shovels and oh I've got an intention to <laughs> so, like, guys stop it alright <laughs> I'm going to leave it here but look check out the advert it helps us out yeah a check lot. out the advert go to the website check out our models hit subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can get notified every time we post and we'll see you in the next video bye <laughs>